In this video, we will discuss the concept of electron gas, which is an easy to understand model, which can help us explain the movement of charge carriers of free electrons in a conductor. And we can use this model to understand current flow, electric current. And by understanding the electron gas model, we can then build upon this knowledge in the next video, which is about electric current and all the mechanisms behind it. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer, and here we go. In order to understand the concept of electron gas and arrive at a definition of an electron gas model, we first need to understand how electrons can be used to transport energy into a circuit and we also need to understand what valence electrons are. And if we have completed both steps one and two, we can then arrive at a sound definition of electron gas and we can also find out how we can use this model to explain the concept of current flow and thus electric current, which is the topic of one of the next videos to come. We have already seen that particles such as protons and electrons that they exert a force on each other depending on their charge, on their electric charge. And the force which they exert on each other is called electrostatic force. And thanks to this force, electrons are repelled by other electrons, protons are repelled by other protons. So if the sign of the charge is identical, positive and positive, negative and negative, they repel each other. And if the sign differs, for example, if you have an electron and a proton, then you will find that this this electrostatic force here leads to an attraction between both particles. And with the help of the electrostatic force, we can move electrons in a very directed and controlled manner through an electric circuit. The question might arise why we would wish to do such a thing. And the answer is because we can use um, the charged particles to transport energy to power devices from light bulbs to the smartphone you might be holding in your hand to watch this video here. So in order to explain movement, the movement of electrons through a conductive material, such as a copper cable, we have to arrive at a model. We have to use a model. And there are several models in the literature which might be used to, uh, to explain this phenomenon. And depending on the discipline you are in, uh, you might want to use the BAM model, which is very useful to understand um, semiconductors, for example, or you might use this concept of electron gas. And in this video, we are using this very concept here, electron gas, in order to explain the movement of electrons because uh, this model is very intuitive, it's very easy to understand, and it gives you a good image of how electrons and charge carriers propagate through conductors, how they propagate through the spaces between atoms. And in order to understand this model, let's consider a copper atom. We have already seen in the previous video how atoms are built, that there is a core which is positively charged, it consists of protons and neutrons, and they are encircled by electrons which um, exist on, on, on shells or orbits, and the farther out an electron is, for example this one here, the weaker is the electrostatic force between this electron and the core. And the closer they are to the core, the stronger is this force. And the outermost electrons here, they have a special name, they are called valence electrons, and they play a very special role as soon as more atoms of a certain material, for example copper, arrange themselves together to form, for example, said copper cable. And copper uh, only has one valence electro electron and other conductors such as aluminum, for example, we have already seen that they have three valence electrons. Now, when several copper atoms combine themselves, for example, to form a copper cable, you will find that they arrange themselves in a grid-like structure. And in doing so, they give up some of their valence electrons. So the outermost electron is freed when, an atomic, when, when several atoms combine into a compound. And these freed up electrons, they can move about freely through, in, through, through the spaces in between the atoms. And if you look at them moving about and the warmer, for example, the cable is, uh, the more Erratic their, their speed is and the colder it gets, the more, uh, the more they slow down. And this, this behavior of charged particles resembles the behavior of a gas cloud. For example, a cloud of water vapor, which also um, has this uh, temperature dependent erratic behavior of its individual atoms. And this is why this model is called electron gas model, because of the behavior of the freed valence electron electrons in between the spaces um, of the atomic lattice of a cable, for example. And something very interesting happens as soon as we have an electric field which permeates, for example, this copper cable. Because this field then exerts a force on each individual atom and causes it to move along, to drift along um, against the direction of the field. And thus this erratic gas cloud of 
particles moving wildly about then has a uniform direction. It moves from one end of the cable to the next. So we have a charged transport taking place, which is caused by an outer electric field. And this is exactly what the electron gas model is about. We can use it to describe the motion of charge carriers through a conductor by imagining ourselves a cloud of free electrons as particles being driven by a force, in this case the Coulomb force, from the negative terminal of a battery, for example, to the positive terminal. And this very simple model of how electrons move, how they propagate through a conductor, this electron gas model is a very solid basis to get a good understanding of what electric current actually is, and we will use it in the next video um, to model an equation which helps us arrive at a definition of electric current which is directly dependent on the drift velocity of this gas like cloud of electrons in a cable. For now, the, the idea of this video mainly was to give you a rough understanding what the model is all about, what the idea behind it is, and to lay the, lay the foundation of understanding current and voltage and later even resistance. For now, that's all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop me a question down below in the comments. I wish you a nice day. See you next time here on The Fearless Engineer. Yeah.